Hello, this is Dr. A with a video on trace minerals. We're going to look at collection and analytical methods. Okay, for sample collection and processing, this is really important. So first of all, trace metal measurements or trace mineral measurements can be performed on random urine, uh, 24 hour urine specimens, serum, plasma, and whole blood uh, as some trace elements are measured in red cells. Um, all specimens for your trace metals must be collected in containers designed for this testing. And this is really, really important. So you really want to double check what the specimen requirements are and make sure that you have the correct containers or in, in uh, tubes and stuff like that. For urine, the container is uh, the requirements to use an acid wash con uh, container or a metal free container. For serum, plasma, and blood testing, a trace metal tube has to be used. Um, there are several different types. There's a serum tube, there's an EDTA trace, trace metal, and a sodium heparin trace metal. Uh, the EDTA trace metal is this royal blue top. It's not usually in your standard collection tubes, usually something that's set aside by the lab or that you have to request specifically. The specimens must be collected with scrupulous attention to detail, such as making sure you have the right anticoagulant, the right collection apparatus, and the right specimen type. Also, don't open the tube. Uh, once you have it collected, it, it needs to be sealed and uh, sent to the analysis lab, and they are the ones who can open it. Um, so again, elements the elements in the samples that we're analyzing are of low concentration. That's why they're trace metals and trace minerals. Um, but they are ubiquitous in the environment. That means they're all over the place in your environment. And so you have to be very careful to avoid contaminating your specimen with environmental uh, metals and stuff like that. The lab environment has to be carefully controlled for trace um, analysis, for the trace metal analysis. Usually that requires the placement of a trace element lab in a separate room. They use a sticky mats at the door, non-shedding ceiling tiles, controlled airflow, and like disposable booties and gear to go into the lab. A little bit about the instrumentation and the methods. Um, so what the first one is the atomic emission spectroscopy. There are three important components of an AE spectrophotometer. The source, it has to be sufficiently hot to produce an excited state species in that metal. The wavelength selecting device for the spectral dispersion of that radiation and the separation of the analytic line from the other radiation. The detector that permits the measurement of that radiation intensity. The liquid sample containing the element, which would usually be, again, plasma serum, urine, something like that, is converted into an aerosol and then is delivered into the, uh, into the source where it receives the energy to emit radiation. And the in intensity of that emitted radiation is correlated to the concentration of the analyte and it's the basis of quantitation. So um, the more you have of that metal in the sample, the more intense that radiation is going to be. Uh, so this is again uh, an example of some of the uh, AES spectra. Um, so we have a few examples here with beryllium, copper, manganese and stuff. And so this is what uh, you would expect to get a reading from. And then we have another one that's really close to a kind of related atomic absorption spectroscopy. So instead of emission, we're going to look at absorption. So uh, here you have continuous spectrum. and. And on emission spectrum, you're seeing what is being emitted. On the absorption, you look at the wavelength that's being absorbed within continuous spectrum. So AAS is an analytic procedure for the quantitation of elements through the absorption of optical radiation by free atoms in a gas phase. The spectra of atoms are line spectra, and they are, again, specific for the absorbing elements. So just like with the emission, each element will have its own pattern with the absorption each element will have its own pattern also. Um, the three most important components of the AA spectral photometer are again the source in which a sample is atomized at a sufficient temperature to produce an excited state species. Those species emit radiation upon relaxation back to the ground state. A wavelength selecting device also known as a monochromator for the spectral dispersion of that radiation and the separation of the analytical line from the other radiation and a detector that permits the measurement of that radiation intensity. So very AAS, AES, very similar. And then we have um, ICPMS, so inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry. 
So it's a state-of-the-art analytic technique for elemental analysis. It measures the mass to charge ratio of selected analyte ions. Uh, it includes an ion source and then a mass to charge analyzer and an ion detector. The um, argon plasma induced by ICP instruments generates a very high temperature and it serves several purposes. It uh, dries the droplets produced by the nebulizer, it vaporizes the dried particle, it atomizes any molecular species, and it thermally ionizes the atoms. Your typical mass spectrometer that is used with ICP is a quadrupole mass spectrometer and the analyzer cons consists of four parallel conducting rods that are arranged in a square ar array. And again, mass spectrometry uses uh, electricity and um, magnetism uh, to separate these uh, elements in mass to charge ratio. And this is a typical mass spectrum reading, kind of that you see these peaks at different mass to charge ratios and all that. Uh, and so ICPMS uh, is used quite a bit for trace. Um, trace minerals. And then a uh, couple other considerations. Um, so elemental speciation, because the toxicity of an element may vary by its chemical form, methods are needed to identify the specific chemical forms. So for example, chromium-6 and chromium-3, just an example where one is helpful, the other is toxic, right? So um, in those cases, usually we do what we call half an analysis, which is a combination of complementary analytical techniques to measure the specific form of the analyte. So an example would be to pair up liquid chromatography with ICPMS, so it's LC ICPMS. And there are a few other alternative analytic techniques for trace metals. We have neutron activation analysis, uh, voltammetric methods, ion chromatography, and then we have grass chromatography, mass spectrometry, and laser ablation ICPMS or LA ICPMS. And that is all I have for you for trace metal analysis.